and I'll divulge a secret. I like weigh barely over a hundred pounds. So like, how much can I possibly eat? And this is why I really like to have a very vegetable rich diet. Cause I feel like I can be eating more, but it's not overly filling. Mm. And I, I've pretty much given up on eating bread otherwise, other than sourdough and Reykjavik because I can't digest American bread. It's like, they're like, okay, I don't need that. <laughs> Yeah, you're definitely healthier for it. I, I keep telling myself, you know, you're eating too much bread. This doesn't mm. have the nutrition. I try to get like the relatively nutritional bread, but the, you mm. know, the, the, the seed, the nuts and seeds that's baked in and it's got like five grams of protein per slice. Well, um, that's not bad. I was just finding that, you know, just general bread just gave me a stomach ache and it wasn't yeah. worth it. And I pretty much have given up bagels. I cannot digest bagels. <laughs> I like looking at them, but I'll, I'll be satisfied with look, just looking. Yeah. Well, you know, that's so, it's so interesting that this is like not the way that most people approach food, right? Um, like people will keep eating something even though it makes them feel ill. Right. And, be, and I, you know, it's, they're not, they're, they're disconnected from the, like where the food came from and they're not thinking about that. And then they're not thinking about the effect, the biological effect the physiological effect that it's having on your, um, on, you know, on your system. Um, and then not thinking about the, you know, the consequences, um, you know, if you're lactose intolerant, but then, you know, somebody is giving you, you know, dairy in your coffee and then you're not, not feeling good afterwards, just like not putting all of that together. Um, That's interesting because now that if we're talking about alternatives, and before there would be, if people wanted to drink milk, but they were lactose and there'd be lactate. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. Get oat milk. And, you know, actually, even a few books ago, let's say this one, Vegan Holiday Kitchen, which came out, I believe, in 2011, when we didn't, have, we only had rice milk and soy milk when I was preparing the recipes, when I was mm -hmm. developing these recipes. That was not so long ago. Now there's oat milk, cashew milk, almond milk, which as we know is not the best for the environment, hemp milk. Those weren't even there 10 years ago or a dozen years ago. So that's been quite an evolution too. Milk doesn't make you feel good. Don't drink it. When I went vegan, I was just thinking so much more carefully about where the food came from and then noticing the effect that I was feeling, you know, what I was feeling after a meal and now I, you know, check in and I think to myself, like, what does this body need right now? And what would be most nourishing? So when I came home, when I was in, in LA over the weekend for another film festival, and I came back, and then all I wanted was a smoothie, you know, like I had, I had, had a super smoothie, a smoothie, smoothie. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't have any plant milk in here. So I just made, um, you know, put some cashews in the blender mm. and made oh, some milk idea. and yeah. And then, you know, used up the rest of the, you know, the frozen fruit in there. And, um, uh, and I always use flax meal and, you know, some cinnamon and that's, you know, that's about it. So no, it yeah. is interesting because what you said, what you said, I agree. People keep eating things that don't make them feel good. If something's not making you feel good, you got to listen to that. There's yeah. a reason for it. Yeah. And do the exploration and see like, Oh, what would I, what would I, what would be better for me? What would I enjoy eating? Let's try something else. Right. And, and there is such an array of things to try. It's getting better everywhere, um, you know, at least food wise. Right. You know, everywhere. And this is the only thing that's getting better. I wish yeah. you know, some other things would get better too. Uh, yeah. But I mean, I, I do think about, you know, what can I control as opposed to, I mean, we're recording this on election day. And, mm -hmm. you know, I can cast my, you know, I have my, my absentee ballot right here. I'm going to take it, you know, down, put it in the, put it in the slot. Um, so that's, that's, I feel helpless about this, but mm -hmm. um, at least I can, I can control what I have in my fridge, what I put in my body um, and the messages that are, that come out of here that I, you know, want to, you know, spread a message of compassion and, you know, that's that, true. I totally agree with that. I mm -hmm. totally agree. And, you know, I, I just went really just for fun to an animal sanctuary this past weekend. And I think, wow, people have to do some really fancy rationalization to do that to these innocent creatures who are so loving and beautiful. 
And you know, so that's how that's not all we can do, but it's a big thing. I don't think it's a small thing. In fact, you know, when I give talks, I sometimes, you know, in the before times, I would give talks at libraries. And I tell people this is really the one thing you can do each and every day, voting with your fork, as the cliche yes. goes. Yes. And it's about your health. And it's also about the environment. It's about the animals. And I, I really, I try very hard not to put people on the defensive. Again, it's like Thanksgiving. People want to know, I'll tell them. But I really try to lead with the food because that's what really grabs them. Yeah, yeah. And then once they once they see how delicious it is, absolutely. then they're a little more, a little more receptive yeah, to absolutely. hearing about the philosophy and making the connection between, you know, having compassion for other humans and having compassion for non-human people as well. But yeah. It all ties in. It all ties in. Yeah, mm -hmm. making those connections. So, and you do it with your beautiful cookbooks. I'll flip through so that they can see your beautiful illustrations and these fabulous, very accessible recipes. And I think the, the first thing I'm going to make is um, your cheesy broccoli casserole. Some, that's something similar that my grandmother used to make. So yeah, that's really one. But I think I, the, those spiral brown like church and community cookbooks. There was always a version of that. Has a lot of broccoli, cheese, of course. In our case, vegan cheese. A lot of parsley. Mm -hmm. So and there's just something very nostalgic and comforting about it. Yes, very nostalgic, very comforting. Yeah. yeah. Um, cause that, that's, that's the thing I, I do really like to use the old recipes having veganized them because that's the, that's the connection that I want folks to make is that like, you, you're not like turning your back on your family and the family cookbook <laughs> when you, you know, choose a different way of, of eating and of seeing yourself in relation to the non-human world. Um, everything, everything can be adapted, you know, absolutely and, everything. And, you know, that's a question again probably second only to where do you get your protein is how do I start? Just how do I start? And so the advice I give is what do you already like? Mm. Start with what you already like, like, and it's so easy to make it more healthy, to make it vegan. Just usually it's a matter of just swapping in uh, vegan butter for butter or vegan cheese for cheese. It's not more complicated than that. Yeah. Now, this is the thing that's gotten so much better and so much easier. So you like pizza, make a pizza with more vegetables. If you like Italian food, that's so easy. Uh, if you like spaghetti and meatballs. Well, there's really great vegan meatballs. Yeah, Just you start where you are. Just do, what do you usually like? Just, you know, and then adapt it. I see the light bulb going off. It's like, it's not a totally weird, unfamiliar cuisine. It's the, the moment where you're like, oh, I didn't realize that it could be this simple right, exactly <laughs> like just putting foil over the butternut squash and right, popping right. it in the oven I didn't know like you just press that staples easy button for me there. right right <laughs> be sure to check out all of Nava's links in the notes below this video